Coming in at number 10, we have The Curse of Tutankhamun. As I see it, this one is either number 1 or number 10. This is probably the most famous mummy curse of all, so I could squeeze it into the number 1 spot, but also I want to keep this list a little bit unpredictable. This tomb was opened back in 1923, and on the wall of the tomb, it read, Death shall come on swift wings to those who disturb the peace of the Pharaoh. That is a pretty clear message. I don't know why no one picked up on the fact that something was going to go down if they opened up this tomb. But as we know, when it comes to colonizing, the people involved rarely pay attention to the negatives. The leader of this excavation died from blood poisoning, and seven more people died prematurely. There's one thing that I will never do, and it is open up some old mummy tomb because I don't need that bad mojo in my life. I only want good vibes that get brought on from drinking ocean spray and riding a longboard. Coming in at number 9, we have the severed hand. If you're super rich and powerful, I think you reach a point where you just start collecting collecting things because you have nothing else to conquer. Instead of finding some sort of inner peace and moving away from material life, you just consume endlessly trying to fill the empty void inside you, but trust me, it doesn't work. Sir Bruce Ingram was a rich and powerful person in England, and he had some friends who were digging up mummies in Egypt. One of his pals sent him over a mummy hand, and it was a gift, not something I would want to be sent. I'm more into practical gifts, I would be happier with a kettlebell. But something Ingram's friend should have told him was that there was a bracelet on the hand that said, curse be to he who moves my body. Yeah, I definitely prefer the kettlebell over a cursed mummy hand. Well, the curse came in full swing when Ingram's home caught on fire and then was hit by a flood. I guess in one way you could look at this as a blessing because water puts out fire, but his home was trashed. Coming in at number 8, we have the curse of Senmut. Some curses haven't got the opportunity to activate. On the wall of Senmut's tomb, it says, his life shall not exist exist on earth. That's a pretty clear threat and a curse I don't want to dabble with. However, this guy might get his shot soon. People are currently working on this tomb to make it a public attraction. I'm sure one person going through there will slip up and get cursed. Also the translation says his life shall not exist on earth, so I think ladies are free to visit. Coming in at number 7, we have mummies on a boat. Someone get Sam Jam on the phone, I have an idea for a movie. This story comes from 1699, mummies must have been a huge hit back then. There was no TV. So digging up some old dusty bones with witchcraft attached to them would have been one of the most exciting things you could do. Well, in 1699, a book came out called Treaties of Embalming. There was apparently a true story in this book that talked about a man who was transporting two mummies he had just purchased via sailboat, and something very strange started happening. The ghosts of the two men started to appear on the boat. These visions were terrifying and probably a warning that something worse was about to come. So this man did the intelligent thing and he threw the two mummies overboard. If he had kept them on board, they would have eaten him up faster than Joey Chestnut eats tube-shaped meat. Oh, sorry, Three, two, one, go! It's the 100th anniversary and we are underway. Coming at number 6 we have the curse of Hamuru. This is a nice sounding curse on the wall of some guy's tomb. It reads I shall seize his neck like that of a goose. So this dude isn't going to put a curse on you that will give you some sort of sickness that takes you out. He's going to personally come to you and choke you to death. Also they had geese in ancient Egypt? Who knew? I thought the first goose was born when Wayne Gretzky scored his first goal. Coming in at number 5 we have a cursed thief. Here's the thing. If you're going to steal, you need to follow these tenets. Make sure you don't get caught. Make sure the item has high resale value and make sure that the item you're stealing isn't cursed. If you follow those rules, you'll be a master thief before you know it. But this is one of the most famous stories in Don't Mess With Mummies. A German tourist decided he would visit an Egyptian tomb and steal something from a mummy. Little did he know you're not supposed to do that. The tourist eventually got extremely sick, became paralyzed, and then died from a mysterious cause. Now what made this case so famous was when his stepson sent the cursed item back to Egypt. It arrived at the German embassy in Egypt with a note saying that the son felt in order to lift the curse from his family, he had to return the artifact to Egypt. Coming in at number 4, we have the Book of the Dead, a spell book from ancient Egypt that has been said to give the person who can control it the power to control the dead and walk amongst those from the afterlife. That sounds like quite the party trick. I don't know if that would be something I would mess around with in my day to day. I try to avoid death at all costs, so trying to decipher a cursed book of the dead sounds like it would give me the future I would not. 
be looking for. And it should be no surprise that Aaron Amber, one of the men involved in excavating the Book of the Dead, died just a few years after it was dug up. Him and his wife were hosting a wondrous dinner party. They were probably bragging about this amazing book they found and someone made an offhanded joke about ancient Egypt. And then next thing you know, Amber's house was on fire and he died there. So I don't know if you want to try and read that book, but I think I'll skip the opportunity for supernatural powers at the risk of death. Coming in at number 3 we have The Curse Consumes You. I don't know what it would be like to be cursed. I can imagine it wouldn't be fun. I think it's probably the feeling you have when you haven't done your homework and you know it's due tomorrow but you still don't do it and now you just have to sit there in your anxiety while you continue to not do it. If anyone has survived an ancient Egyptian curse, let me know in the comments. But for archaeologist Hugh Evelyn White, it would seem that the curse was able to work its way into his soul and take his life. White was found dead after he committed s by hanging himself. White was an archaeologist who disturbed quite a few mummies in his day, so if curses are real, it's safe to say that this dude had a curse or two attached to him. Now, this is where the urban legend surrounding his death works its way in. Apparently, there was a note left behind that said, I have succumbed to the curse, which forces me to disappear. The note might be made up to add some spice to the story, but if it's real, you can bet I will never dig again just in case I bump into any mummies. Coming in at number 2 is the curse of Osiris. You think if you were digging up a tomb in ancient Egypt and you found a statue of the god of death, you would just turn around and go home. Like not even back to base camp. You would just pack up all your things, fly all the way home and start working as a used car salesman. Just a complete complete fresh start. Well, some people aren't as quick to abandon ship as me, and maybe they should be because back in 1971, there was an excavation of a mummy's tomb in Saqqara. The head Egyptologist came across a statue of Osiris, and instead of going through with the little game plan I just laid out, he removed the statue of the god of death from the tomb and took it back to his office with his assistants. Once him and his assistant were settled in, he stepped into the bathroom to relieve himself, and that's when his assistant heard screaming coming from the bathroom. He rushed in to find the Egyptologist on the ground. He succumbed to some sort of paralysis and then died the next day. So a mystery paralysis that kills you in less than 24 hours could be explained by medical science or a spell from the god of death. Coming in at the number one spot we have Titanic Mummy. We like to think that the Titanic sank because of human ignorance and that's probably what happened. Saying that a boat was unsinkable in the early 20th century is one of the most insane claims you can make, but it's still fun to speculate on the supernatural. But this is how the story goes, and just so we're clear, the majority of this story is 100% true. There was a museum in England that was housing the mummy of the Princess of Anamera. It was a wonderful piece of history, but it was said to be cursed. Rumors of the curse being true seemed to solidify when a museum guard died out of nowhere. So the museum thought it would be a good idea to get this thing the hell out of there and then send it off to America. This priceless mummy from ancient Egypt worked its way onto the Titanic, and then we know what happened from there. Some people seem to think that it was the curse from this ancient mummy that brought down the unsinkable ship, and maybe they're right. That's right, starting us off at number 10, and probably the most obvious one is the pyramids. Just outside of Cairo in Giza, you will find some of Earth's most amazing and famous pyramids. They were apparently built more than 4,500 years ago and are actually monumental tombs of ancient queens and pharaohs. But how did human beings build these massive structures with limited technology? Answer? Maybe they didn't. Maybe the aliens did. The Great Pyramid is made up of millions of precisely hewn stones, and they weigh at least two tons each. This, along with the idea that three of the Great Pyramids line up with Orion's belt in the night sky, lead many to believe that the pyramids are actually of alien creation. Now, scientists and historians actually have a pretty good idea of how thousands of human hands could have helped create these magnificent structures, but nothing has been set in stone. <laughs> so, did the aliens build the pyramids, or did we just not give the ancient Egyptians enough credit? Who knows? In our ninth spot today, we have the tombs. Now, this one is more on the crazier side. The theory comes from the show Ancient Aliens, which is questionable, but also really addicting. Anyways, ancient astronaut theorists believe that the ancient Egyptian tombs weren't just built for burial purposes. No, they were actually instructed by the aliens on how to create these tombs. If you look at old texts from back then, they talk about how they received knowledge to build tombs from the gods. Now, it's believed that the gods they worshipped were actually aliens, so there's that. Aliens told them how to build the tombs, but why? Well, they believe that this is because the tombs were a way for the Egyptians to get to the afterlife and reunite with extraterrestrials. 
Egyptians believed that the tombs were gateways to the afterlife. That's why they put so much time and detail into them, and they were so lavish and intricate. In the end, they would use the tomb to reunite with aliens. In fact, ancient astronaut theorists believe that our physical life is not our only life, but it's actually preparing us for another life after this one that's even greater and with extraterrestrial beings. Coming in at number 8 we have the Abios Hieroglyphics. Now this is either a sign of time travel or it's a sign of aliens or maybe it's even a sign of time traveling aliens. On an Egyptian temple wall in Abdios there are hieroglyphics of what appear to be futuristic aircraft such as a helicopter and a spaceship. This specific piece is dated to be from 3000 years ago and I think it's pretty safe to say that there were no aircrafts that were human made at that point. Dr. Ruth Hubbard and her husband were the ones to discover these amazing hieroglyphics and they were shocked that they not only discovered them but they also discovered them behind a wall panel that they had to break down in order to reveal the entire piece. Now why was it hidden? Who's hiding it? Is it the aliens or is it our human government official friends who are doing their best to conceal the secret? All we know for sure is that these markings that are there are 3000 years old and no human at that time had access to such vehicles that we know of. Moving on to number 7 we have the Sphinx. So Dewey already talked about how everyone believes about the pyramids being made by aliens. Well, what about the Sphinx? Don't worry, they believe the Sphinx was created by aliens as well. I mean, how is it that they managed to create such a tall and intricate structure when they didn't have any modern day building equipment? It's quite bizarre. But that's not even the weirdest part. Back in 2018, satellite photos on Mars revealed something really freaking freaky. It appeared as if there was a Sphinx similar to the one in Egypt on Mars. That's right, you heard me correctly. The rock formation that was seen in the images eerily resembled the 200 foot tall Sphinx statue. So could it be that aliens built the one on Mars and the one in Egypt? Dun, dun, dun. Coming in at our number 6 spot we have hieroglyphics on Mars. Ok so this one isn't exactly found in Egypt but it does have a tie to Egypt. NASA recently retrieved tons of new photos from the red planet Mars taken by its Curiosity rover. When the pictures came back many noticed these awfully strange markings on the side of a rock. The markings being rather similar to the ancient hieroglyphics that are found in Egypt. According to many alien researchers and conspiracy theorists this is proof that the aliens had been on earth especially in ancient Egypt and that they also may have come from Mars. But but scientists aren't exactly on board with this theory yet. Many believe the photo to be manipulated into having the markings on the stone and others just think that they could be strange markings that you know just aren't explainable. In the end the only thing close to life on Mars that has been found so far is water below the planet's surface. So while that gives the possibility and opportunity for life we still don't have any hard proof. But if these markings did turn out to be real no one would give a heck about Martian water. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the sun god Aten. Back in the day, ancient Egyptians were known as polytheistic, meaning they believed in multiple gods. That was until one day, Pharaoh Akhenaten was literally like, nah, we only need to worship one god and one god only. And that was the sun god. Which makes us wonder, why would Akhenaten come out of nowhere and declare this? What changed his mind? What made him believe that the sun god was the only god out there? Well, the answer might lie in the depiction of that god. Aten is depicted as a disc in the sky. Isn't that strange? What else do we know that is a disc that flies through the sky? UFOs slash aliens and their spacecrafts. So theory goes that Akhenaten was greeted by this flying saucer one night and his entire view about gods changed. The aliens might have given him a message telling him that they are the only god out there and they should bow down to them. So he did as he was told to do and got everyone to worship this flying disc. AKA the aliens. Coming in at our number 4 spot we have an Egyptian pictograph of a caped alien. This pictograph from 400 BCE pictures a man offering up some type of large fowl to what seems to be a caped alien. No one has been able to prove exactly what is being depicted here or why but one thing to pay close attention to is the eyes. Don't those eyes look like the stereotypical ones we know from all of our alien movies, stories and media? Yeah, they do. Without primary sources to tell us what exactly is going on here, this is a hard one not only to debunk but even also to prove. I do really enjoy that it has the famous alien eyes though because when I dive into the alien topic I always try to have a healthy amount of skepticism but I do also look for the common denominators and those eyes are definitely common in pretty much any alien media out there. So I don't know man but it seems cool to me. In our third spot we have Akhenaten's elongated skull. So I just finished talking about how Akhenaten might have been in contact with aliens, right? 
Well, turns out that he might have been an alien himself. People came to this conclusion after looking at depictions of him. So in all of his depictions, he is seen with an elongated face and head, a long neck, small ribs, and a protruding belly. While all the other pharaohs were drawn to look majestic and muscular, why was he the only one depicted as so? This means that the carvings must have been an accurate representation of what he looked like. So people were like, wow, he has a lot of alien type characteristics, maybe he is one. Whereas others believe he suffered from a genetic disorder that caused his body to grow as so. But you decide what you want to believe. And coming in at number two, we have Elon Musk. If Elon Musk says it, then it must be true, right? Back in 2020, Elon Musk famously tweeted, Aliens built the pyramids, obvi. And this, needless to say, caused a huge stir. Shortly after the tweet was sent out, Egypt's Minister of International Cooperation responded to Musk's tweet with an invitation to actually visit the pyramids and the tombs so that they could prove to him that the ancient Egyptians did indeed build them with no help from our alien friends. Many others went on to reply to Elon Musk's tweet, including Dr. Zahai Hawass and Dr. Sarah Parkak. And I don't think they took it as lighthearted as the minister did. Parkak replied with, Egyptologist here, Elon, who works on a royal pyramid site. They did not. Ancient Egyptians did. Plus we have the papyrus that are like live tweets of pyramid construction at Giza. Happy to share resources so you can get yourself educated. Ooh, yeah, so while I think Elon is a very smart guy, I would actually have to be more inclined to listen to him after he takes them up on his trip to the pyramids. If he is still saying the same thing after that, then hey, you know what, maybe he's onto something. But until then, uh, maybe just put away the phone there, Mr. Elon. And in our number one spot today, we have King Tut's dagger. Upon excavating the tomb of King Tut, scientists discovered a long 34 centimeter dagger wrapped up with King Tut. It has since been given the name King Tut's dagger. How original. Now back in the day, they didn't have the capability to study the dagger without damaging it, so it wasn't touched until 1970. When an x-ray was done on the dagger, it was revealed that it was made out of some interesting compounds, primarily nickel and iron. Here's the interesting part. How could it have been composed of iron when his burial predated Egypt's Iron Age by nearly 2,000 years? So that right there is shocking. As a result of the iron and nickel composition, scientists have declared that it was made from extraterrestrial metal. Now, there are two theories here. One is that a meteorite crashed down and they used that to make the dagger. Theory two is that the dagger was made by aliens and dropped or left by them accidentally, or maybe even given to King Tut as a gift. Starting off this countdown, we have the booby traps. When pharaohs passed away, they were buried with all their belongings and a bunch of valuables. Because of this, they didn't want anyone raiding the tomb and disrupting the pharaoh's body. So basically, they designed booby traps slash security systems. This includes rooms that led to nowhere and fake walls that robbers would break thinking that there would be valuables behind it only to find nothing. The scary part though, they also had false floors that would break upon stepping on them. And then the person would fall down into a death pit. Basically a hole with spikes and spears. Ouch. So researchers need to be very careful when exploring these ancient ruins. One wrong step and that could be it for them. Moving on at number nine, we have the missing body. In 1934, Djoser, the first king of the third dynasty of Egypt was found. I mean, kind of. Only his mummified left foot was found. It was detached from the rest of his body. Dude, that's so creepy. Like where is the rest of his body then? To this day, his mummy has never been found. It's believed that maybe grave robbers got to his body, but we don't know for sure. Hey, maybe he just wasn't a fan of his left foot and wanted to be buried separately from it. I'm just kidding, but that is creepy as heck. He's not the only mummy who's missing though. His chancellor that was buried with him has never been found either. Weird. In our eighth spot today, we have the toxins. Exploring ancient Egyptian tombs and pyramids can be very deadly. In fact, a number of deaths that may have been caused by the ancient Egyptian curse might just be from the scientists coming in contact with deadly pathogens. Like they're entering a place that has been opened in thousands of years. These places are home to dead bodies and dead animals and rotting food. In fact, researchers discovered that some ancient mummies carried mold. This type of mold can cause congestion or bleeding in the lungs. 
Also, bacteria such as Pseudomonas and Staphylococcus may grow on the tomb walls. On top of that, scientists have also detected ammonia gas, formaldehyde, and hydrogen sulfide all inside sealed sarcophagi. Discovering this must have been a huge wake-up call to them. It just goes to show how dangerous their job really is. They're potentially being exposed to life-threatening toxins. Moving on at number seven, we have the Valley of Mummies. In the mid-1990s, a team of archaeologists came across something pretty creepy. They unearthed 105 mummies all in the same vicinity. At least, originally, they thought it was just 105. In the end, they found hundreds more. But they believe that they haven't even found them all. They think there could be as many as 10,000 mummies out there. That is so creepy. Some of the mummies were even covered with creepy masks, others chest plates. Others though were just in plaster or linen coverings. In the end, they realized that the area was an ancient Egyptian graveyard. So that's great, they just dug up dead people and wonder why they get haunted or cursed. Like come on, just let them rest in peace. Coming in at number six, we have the Canopic Jars. As part of their burial process, Egyptians would place the internal organs of the dead into four jars before mummification. One jar had the person's lungs, the other the stomach, another had the intestines, and one for the liver. Why did they do this? Well, to preserve the organs, because it was thought that the person would need those organs in the afterlife. Now, imagine being the first archaeologist to find these jars. They're beautiful. The jar lids were carved with the heads of the four protectors. You had the baboon head, the jackal head, the falcon head, and the human head. So they were probably like, score, rare ancient Egyptian containers, whoa, until opening it up and finding dead parts inside. Sorry, but that must have reeked and then freaked them out. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the little coffins. Back in 1922, when Howard Carter and his team found King Tut's tomb, they also found something quite strange and unsettling. They found an undecorated wooden box in one of the burial chambers. Upon opening the box, they found two small infant-sized coffins in it. One coffin had the Osiris inscribed in it. The other had nothing. After opening the coffins, they found that they contained two mummified premature babies. Here's the creepy part. They were buried in King Tut's tomb, meaning they must have had some relation to him, meaning they were probably his kids. But one of the babies had some abnormalities and birth defects, and that these babies were ones he had with his sister. Isn't that just great? Coming in at number four, we have the curses. Ancient Egyptian tombs and pyramids are filled with ancient curses. On a number of occasions, archaeologists have been exploring these ruins when they come across ancient curses inscribed on the walls. Let's take a look at a man named Zahi Hawass. He was on the team that excavated a tomb at the Pyramid of Giza. That's when he encountered a curse. When translated, the curse read, and I quote, All people who enter this tomb who will make evil against this tomb and destroy it, May the crocodile be against them in water, and snakes against them on land. May the hippopotamus be against them in water, the scorpion on land." End quote. Now, I'm not entirely sure what that means, but you know it's creepy and that they're pretty much doomed. Anyways, he claims that he was not superstitious, but the curse did freak him out. In the end, he later moved two child mummies and reported he was haunted by them in his dreams. This did not stop until the mummy of the children's father was reunited with them. Not gonna lie, that's really freaking creepy. In our third spot today, we have the human sacrifice. During one excavation, archaeologists found several servants slaughtered and buried next to a pharaoh's tomb. Turns out that the Egyptians would sacrifice servants and other individuals when a pharaoh or person of power died. They did this because they thought that if they were buried alongside them, that they could continue serving them in the afterlife. Imagine how creepy it must have been unearthing all those dead bodies of people that were sacrificed. Extremely creepy. Moving on to number two, we have King Tut's heart. So I think I know the reason why King Tut is mad and has released this curse on Earth. It's because his heart is freaking missing, okay? So like I said, all the vital organs were placed inside canopic jars. Now, the heart was very important to the Egyptians. The Egyptians thought that the heart was required for someone to get into afterlife. So it was always left in place, never removed. If it was accidentally removed, they made sure to always put it back in and sew it shut. 
But when King Tut's body was found, they discovered his heart was missing. Like, those things were preserved so they don't decay. So, does that mean that somebody cut him open to steal his heart or what? Who really knows, but it is very creepy if you really think about it. And in our number one spot today, we have the mummified animals. So we all know that the Egyptians loved their cats. But did you know that the Egyptians used to brutally kill cats and other animals just to mummify them? Yeah. So apparently they had special farms that would breed cats, dogs, birds, reptiles, etc. These were then destined for mummification. So when someone died, they could bury them alongside these mummified animals. In fact, x-rays of some of these animals showed how gruesome their deaths were. How come we never learned about this in ancient history class? Like, that's dark. 